and welcome to Those Brothers Podcast. Well, this is Ron Bearden. And Beaver Randolph. And welcome to Those Brothers. Those Brothers. Um, uh, today, we're just going to... Um, we kind of had a, an issue with audio last few times we tried this, but um, kind of praying over it and hoping that we can get something out of it today. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, Instead of a whole lot of Bible teaching and we're going to do this and we're going to share about this, uh, Beaver had a good point. He said, maybe we just ought to share about ourselves yeah. so people can kind of get to know us. Yeah. Most people do, you know, family and friends that are out there, they know they yeah. know us. I think i um, starting to get a few listeners that probably don't know who we are at this point, but, um, you know, we're... Uh, good point. Yeah, so as... Uh, we were saying earlier we've um, had a few audio issues, but we're going to try to just go through with what we got right now. So if we sound a little off, <laughs> this, is our, this is our third attempt. Have so. patience, yeah. It's free. <laughs> so, uh, um, um, as I was saying before, my name is Beaver, and uh, today just going to kind of just share our little testimony of who we are, because um, we, like Ron said before, kind of came out of the gate really fast and hard and and uh yeah didn't really get a chance to for you to find out who we are right so, so we'll talk a little bit about ourselves so you yeah. get to know, a little bit about our testimonies and this one will probably be just maybe a little shorter than your usual one i don't know we'll see what happens but um my name beaver and um did you want to go first did no, you kind of it's, on, it's on you bro. right okay well my name beaver and um uh i've believe that testimony is kind of a ongoing thing i believe that our testimony is kind of never over um <clears throat> um but uh, i'm a native american uh three quarters dakota sioux uh from fort peck reservation in montana um i'm in a wheelchair yeah uh, i've been like th- like this since i was Six years old. Uh, had uh, I'm gonna add a couple of details on that uh, that I didn't before. Uh, I when I was six years old, um, we were uh, living at somewhere else in Texas. I don't remember where, and and uh, I had a, a swing set that uh, I was playing on, and and uh, uh, it had. Uh, a little one of those old teeter totter swings. Yeah. You remember those things? Yeah, they kind of swing back and forth, and if you got them going fast enough, you could make the whole swing set about come off the ground. You yeah, know. Yeah. And um, so I I was playing on that, and uh, I went to get off. I I have, and I'm gonna back up a little bit. I have a condition called segmental spinal dysgenesis, which is kind of like spina bifida. If anybody out there knows what that is right. it's just a spinal condition that you get in your spine you're born with it um anyway uh it was a pretty rare case i would like the 23rd case in the whole united states or something like that at the time oh, wow yeah it was pretty uh um yeah scarce unique yeah yeah so um anyway back to the story i got on got on my swing set either that morning or that afternoon i was playing i was swinging having fun and my legs never really have worked i walked with four um, crunches crutches till that point right and um uh, leg never really would work but i I had some feeling in them i could feel them i could you know make a move but barely um anyway but my spine had a had a uh, basically a hole in it and uh had been in and out of hospitals with surgeries and stuff and this hole had um they had put some of that cadaver bone in my back right and it had melted and it was supposed to be supporting my whole spine well it wasn't because it wasn't there um and uh, i went to i had been on this this teeter-totter on the swing and i went to get off of the swing and uh and just the, the way i've always described it uh, my back gave way and it felt like a hole had opened up 
like I was still standing up on both feet, and it felt like a hole had opened up, and I had just fell right into the ground. Like my leg didn't buckle enough. It just felt like I went straight into the ground up to my waist. And I remember sitting there, and I looked. I went down, and I was like, what in the world? What happened? Tried to get up, couldn't get up. And I remember looking up and seeing Mom in the kitchen window, which was right at the house, you know, 20 feet away. And uh, she instantly knew what happened. And um, that started a whole another several years of surgeries and um, trying to get me where I could walk again, and and uh, uh, which never really had walked to begin with. But, uh, you know, came to uh, live in a wheelchair. Right. And um, so um, we had spent, uh, my, I have uh, three older brothers and had put, um, they, they've always treated me like, you know, I, I've never in a wheelchair. I was never different than anyone else. Right. And that was real important to me, you know. It gets you through the people staring and people asking you weird questions and when you can go home and nobody treats you like you're different, you know. Right. And I think it was a huge part of my testimony was 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 that. Uh, my mom and dad as well. And uh, um, had grew up in church, uh, in and out of uh, um, a lot of churches, but... Uh, Basically, yeah, just grew up in the church environment, in a Christian environment. My mom always read the Bible to me when I was little, you know, and uh, was always, you know, talking, uh, you know, my dad was always talking about Scripture, and and it was always just kind of continuously flowing into me, yeah. you know. Um, but, uh, you know, that's that's kind of that's kind of my story, but it's just, it's, it's an ever-going, ongoing thing, and I will continue to, you know, kind of post up, yeah, more and more as we go. Yeah, but, as we go along. Yeah, and you'll, you'll hear more of this story, but that's just kind of where I started. So. Wow, that was good. So that was cool, brother. Well, my my story is I I did too. Kind of grew up in the church uh, from a young age. Had had really you know some good church experiences and really bad, which I already put out there. But yeah, you know whatever. That, and so. Uh, my family kind of broke apart when I was uh, 15, 16, quit going years. You know, my mom and dad got a divorce, found out my dad wasn't my real dad. That really messed me up, you know, uh, yeah. kind of deal. And uh, so I just was a tr kind of, <laughs> don't, uh, I was a troublemaker. I mean, I, I got into a lot of trouble, got involved with, with, uh, marijuana and drugs and then you know just uh just kind of spun out spun right out of control you know in and out of county jails you know there were some things you know i went into the navy and that was great got through boot camp got through my a school and this and that and then i got kicked out you know yeah uh so done a lot of county time and in 1994 i received three 15-year sentences so uh, aggravated sentences so I uh, did some time in the Texas Department of Criminal Justice from the 90s to got out in 2005 while I was in prison in 1997 I had an encounter with Jesus Christ and have never been the same and there's I mean there's a lot of details I'm skipping over and this and that and well like you said we'll go into more detail and you're welcome to ask anything and I can ask you anything yeah. or whatever I would like you to maybe expound on that a little bit on what specific you, yeah, like your encounter with Jesus, because I feel like it's important to your yeah testimony. Well, at the time uh, in nineteen, uh, this was in nineteen ninety seven. So I had I, when I got to prison in nineteen ninety four, I was a, already a full blown gang member and involved in a bunch of stuff and all that. Uh, got down to prison, got on some bad units, got some. I mean, it was some bad stuff going on, and uh, I wound up on the Roach unit in 1997 and um, same thing going on We the people who are who I was with were at war with some other family so I mean there, there was a lot of stuff going on yeah and this I was in medium custody and this guy shows up on uh, from from where I was from you know El Paso uh, he was he was a, I knew him you know he was a good dude he was a homie man big Rick and I thought 
you know, uh, we there weren't a whole lot of us. And when I saw him coming, then you know, that he had came onto the unit, I was like, right on, man, because Big Rig was a big old dude, man. All right. tatted out. I was like, yeah, man, here comes the Skeena with Rick, man. Okay. Good dude. And so uh, he winds up getting put into the same uh, pod that I was in, in medium custody. And uh, we were the only two, do, two uh, in there that were, you know, from El Paso. And he, uh, when they called day room, he came out. And uh, I'm thinking we're going to talk about, hey, you know, I'm going to lace him up about, hey, this is, these are these people and these are these people and, hey, this is going on and all this, you know, kind of get, you know. Yeah. Lace him up and he's uh, he's like, hey, well, oh, man, I'm a Christian. <laughs> I was like, what? Uh, I mean, I was just like speechless. I was, I was like, this picture, this guy, dude in front of me, he's a bad dude and he's telling me he's a Christian, he's got a Bible. And I thought the Bible was kind of like, you know, he was going to give me some information, you know, we, mm -hmm. you know, put stuff in there, information, whatever. And I'm like, oh, what? And and I told him, I said, man, put that Bible up, man. I didn't want to be seen around no Bible. I didn't want to be, yeah, I wasn't trying to hear none of that yeah. whatsoever about Jesus, God, all this. I just, I, I was angry, bitter, whatever. And so he goes, he, he, I was like, well, you're a Christian. That's cool. Uh, I really, I mean, you're a homie and everything, but I ain't got nothing for you. There's a lot of stuff going on. And if you ain't down for it, then what? You, yeah. It's it's not even worth my time to say anything or whatever. So he he told me his testimony and sat there. And when he told me his, you know, he asked me, he goes, well, just let me t tell you, uh, tell you my testimony. And I didn't even know what a testimony is or what, you know. Yeah. So he began to tell me about what had happened in his in his life and what led him to the Lord, and I, at the time I didn't think anything whatsoever that it was important or whatever. Yeah. And little did I know it planted a seed in my heart, man. Mm. So after that, I'm like, okay, Rick, cool, man. You know, much love, homie, but I ain't got nothing for you, man, because yeah, we got business going on, stuff going on, this <laughs> and that. So. So a couple of days later, man, I'm in the chow hall, man, and I'm working in the chow hall behind the line in medium custody. They they were actually dumb enough to put medium custody inmates serving food. Uh, wow. So, I mean, that wasn't going to be – I get the job in there. I get a milk crate, man. I had, a, I had to have a milk crate. And everybody's like, why you got that milk crate? Because I'm going to throw it in the corner when it goes down and use it to jump over the over – the, uh, counter there where, where we were ser serving food in case something went down or whatever. Right, know? right. So anyway, I, I got into a fight with a guy who got wound up uh, getting locked up in ad seg, which is aggravated administrative seg, which is basically the jail within the prison. Got out a couple of days later, get put in a cell in medium custody again, and it's an empty cell. And about, I don't know, specifically like a day later, one that evening or whatever, I had a, a, an encounter with the Lord in my room, and uh, I know he, I, know, I know he was in there, I, not physically, not you know when he was speaking to my heart. It wasn't audible. It was just I knew God was there, and it blew me away. It was just yeah. kind of like He showed up. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? And, and there were some things going on in my heart too because I looked at Rick and I was like, Wow, man, that dude, whoa, yeah, you know. Wow. I mean, it was, it spoke to me. Yeah. So anyway, in, I'm in the room there and, and I know God's presence is in there. And it's like I was being shown these through my memories all the times in my life when I should have been killed. And there were a lot. Were another stuff happening, you know, yeah. and, uh, and God told me, it was like, you know, Ron, Ronnie, I've had you, I've had you in my hand all this time, mm -hmm. but now you have to choose. And it wow. scared me to death. Not only God speaking to me, that, but God is real and he's here and he's in my room and I knew it and it's time to make a choice. Yeah. So I was just like, oh Lord. I... So <laughs> it's like that... a, like a case, you know, I think that scripture he leaves in, you know, the, the 99 to find the one, you know? Absolutely. He did but for me. Sometimes the one ain't, doesn't know he's lost. Oh, absolutely. You know? 
Yeah. He doesn't understand how things have just gone down. You know yeah. what I mean? Yeah. I gave my heart when I was a little boy in that church. Meant it. Mm -hmm. So I believe that I belong to him. And then 20 years later, you know, yeah. I'm 29 years old, getting ready to do prison time, and he shows up yeah. in my cell. And it changed everything. Yeah. You know, and it wasn't necessarily easy. I, I was kind of always had the perception, you know, like you're flying on the wings of angels and you're above all the problems and all, you know, you, yeah. everything turns yeah. and through some things that were just yeah. crazy. Yeah. But he got me through and he's never get, given up on me. And yeah. so when we talk, as people get to know us or whatever, we'll just share a little bit more parts of our testimony and who we yeah. are. But it was right to stop and say, hey, this is who we are. This is what we've been through instead of cha-ching, we got the, we got yeah, the, we got the next flashy message out yeah, for you. Yeah, here we come, you know. Yeah. It's kind of what we had to cool, it, cool the jets. <laughs> Yeah, so I was ruined. We, we we came into this today going, man, like Ron going, he's like, oh, I have so much stuff going on in my head. I want to get out. I want to say. Yeah. I want to do. And and uh, with me, it's I want to do it as well. But I'm coming from the opposite direction. I'm going, God, I don't know what to do next. I don't know what what you want me to do next. What works. Because we had, like we were saying last night, we had Bible study at our home last night. And we had this whole lesson planned. And we were like, oh, we're going to say this. We're going to do this. And, and uh, you share that. And, and, and uh, you know, we're going to go through, you know, the, uh, the just the regular Bible message. And, and I get just, it just wasn't what God Everything had, got had in mind. Up. Yeah, and, definitely. And, you know, I think, you know. It's just it's just a matter to be willing to go with the flow. I think God wanted you to just go with with the flow, yeah. On this and no more I audio the, problems either. So the cool thing about it is when when I think about this, I think about who I'm talking to, and I'm talking to my loved ones, my boys, yeah, and friends, yeah. And I, you know, it's not you know I'm not WKRP in Cincinnati. You know, <laughs> it ain't like that, brother. You know? Yeah, exactly. exactly. <laughs> but it can go that way, and sometimes it can go that it's way, yeah. you know. So, but it ain't like that at all, man. Yeah. We're just too, and, yeah. and, and you know, I didn't get to all of my tests, but, but I'm in a chair too. Yeah. I got shot in 2000, uh, shot twice and was paralyzed from my chest down and went through a lot of experiences up and down and this and that. So yeah. we're, we're, we're those brothers, you know, yeah. in the chariots. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. We're in yeah. these chariots, man. Yeah. And, you know, I think I, I'm, you know, I'm just getting where where I think you know God is finally kind of getting me clearer vision on what this is going to be. You know, and and I'm I'm thoroughly enjoying it now. You it's know, a lot and, more easier when I guess we don't yeah. come at it like hey, we're supposed to. Yeah, just be us, this. man. Just yeah. be us. Yeah, just be and us. encourage. That's the the entire purpose yeah. of us even doing this. The motive is to encourage our family and our friends and those out there that are. Yeah. That are they're walking and struggling and whatever you yeah. know just to share our faith to share our own walks yeah you know we we're want all, you to know we struggle as well oh I mean, it's, absolutely it's, brother yeah we struggle as well and and um you know that was that's just the purpose of this we we don't want to be flashy we don't want to be uh yeah. like you said yeah radio personalities you yeah. know and, and maybe by this ep by this uh podcast or episode or whatever yeah. we've kind of cooled our jet or me cooled my jets and mellowed to where you know yeah yeah so it oh, can just too. be natural and who we are instead yeah of, you i know. think we just we're, we're learning to settle into it a little bit and we'll we'll get there for sure and bear with us a little but yeah but we're here to encourage and also to be you know let you know who we are yeah that exactly. was kind of the purpose of of this little episode man yeah yeah so there's a lot more to go into our testimonies a lot more we'll talk about you know a lot of people know us some people may not yeah you know yeah. so so oh. praise the lord oh yes well well all right you guys well that is it and be um, encouraged be encouraged and be blessed and uh and uh that's it we're gonna sign off so. and we'll talk to you next time god bless y'all
God bless you guys.